Now, I, uh, on a different topic, I am, uh, you know, I'm a fan of Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. In fact, uh, due to Ready Player One, I'm actually picked up, uh, Armada. I'm actually about to start Chapter 6 on Armada and, you know, see how that goes. But I love Ready Player One. I mean, not just because of the fact that I'm a child of the 80s, I, you know, I love the 1980s and... Uh, I got I got a lot of the references. Some of them I had to actually look up because it's been a while since the last, you know, got any of the of the references. Hell, I actually had to do that with one of the lines from uh, uh, from Armada, which I ha couldn't recognize right off the bat. It being a line from the movie "Say Anything," but uh, and of course, you know, uh, the the thing I wanted to talk about is the Ready Player One film that's coming up. That's directed by it's going to be directed by Steven Spielberg. Actually, it's being directed by Steven Spielberg. Now, uh, I do have some concern about uh, about Ready Player One, the film. And that's in concern with Steven Spielberg. Now, I know many people are like, well, this is Steven Spielberg. You know, he's a big name. Yes, that's true. But I'm a little concerned about the tone of the film that's coming up. You see, when it comes to Spielberg's work... You know his early work, even uh, even the stuff that he did in the 1980s with Always and E.T. and Raiders of the Lost Ark, and, and you know and all those films, uh, even the stuff that it, uh, that he sort of produced in that time, you know, all seemed like they had like a little bit of a heart to them, you know, like a, a youthfulness, and like young at heart, like that, uh, you know, that a person. I mean, it's like the director behind the wheel, uh, behind that the, those productions, had a lot of heart. You know, like they were young at heart, no matter how old they got. And of course, you know that that feeling shines through in a lot of his films. I mean, when you watch Close Encounters of the Third Kind, you feel hope. When you uh, watch, you know, Jaws, you still feel, you know, that it's someone that's young at heart behind that that camera. And even with Jurassic Park. You know, it, it, it had that feeling. But then, uh, but then he, the, then Spielberg did Chandler's List and his, his mentality, if it, it feels like his mentality changed when it came to his, uh, the films, everything became dark and gritty and it's like he went from someone who was young at heart to someone who is old and bitter. And even his comedies, you know, don't seem like, like, like they're supposed to, I mean, his comedies feel like, you know, they're dark and gritty as well. I mean, in tone. I mean, if you look at, like, Jurassic Park, it feels like, okay, young at heart. Someone young at heart, you know, is directing it. But then after Schindler's List, everything else after that, it's like, I mean, even with The Terminal, it feels, you know, dark, gritty, and it's like, like he's dropped into, you know, he became a cynic. And it just, it royally sucked. It sucks as a result that, you know, all of his films afterwards, you know, lost that, that feeling because, I mean, it's like a, a gigantic shift in tone. It's the same way how I feel about James Cameron and his work. It's like, during, from Terminator on forward, you know, uh, throughout all the 80s, Cameron's films had a certain tone in a certain way where they balanced uh, advancement in, te in film technology as well as storytelling. One did not overpower the other. It always was an even balance. But then he, uh, but then after Titanic, he does Avatar in which he's like, okay, fuck the story. I'm just focusing on, uh, on the uh, advancements of technology. And that royally hurts. It royally sucks. That, that that kind of mentality came up. Because, I mean, that's how it feels with Avatar. I can't even sit through ten minutes of Avatar without wanting to bash my head in with a, with a friggin' hammer because of the fact that it it's, you know, it, it's a heartless story. And, but when it comes back down, back around to Spielberg, the thing I'm worried about is that when it comes to Ready Player One, I'm worried about that cynicism and that you know feeling that he uh, that his films have nowadays coming through in Ready Player One instead of what it needs to be, which is okay. 
since the basically Spielberg's like, okay, I want to want to show that the '80s were awesome. Okay, I get that idea, but in order for him to show that the '80s were awesome, he needs to make this film with the same tone that he had when he made E.T., when he made Raiders of the Lost Ark, when he made Always, when he made Hook. When he made Jurassic Park, he needs to recapture that young at heart feeling because that's the kind of because that, that's the Spielberg that this film needs. He we need the Steven Spielberg that made Jaws, that made Close Encounters of the Third Kind, that person that that you that is sitting behind the camera that that has this young at heart feeling of wonder and awe and you know and a very excellent storyteller. And I'm worried that Spielberg may not be able to recapture that feeling. I mean, I mean, when you watch something from the 1980s that was directed by Spielberg, there, I mean, it, when you sit there and watch it, you get the sense of feeling that that is lacking in his work nowadays. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. He'll be able to recapture it. Um, I'm not sure if he will or not, but some directors they've had to, that have been in the industry for a while, whenever they shift their tone, they tend to lose track of uh, of how to get back to it. So that way, as a re I mean, they basically change their tone. There's so few film directors I know of nowadays that actually continue to keep that uh, that sensibility and tone about how they direct about how they direct that they've had since. The, the first job, first directing job. A uh, great example, John Carpenter. Everybody, I mean, all the works of John Carpenter all have this mentality, this, you know, tone, this sensibility that continue, that Carpenter has not changed ever since uh, the his first film, which is Dark, uh, which is Dark Star. And, uh, and of course, you know, I understand, you know, changing of the times, da 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 da, but even so, I worry about Ready Player One, the film, because I'm worried that Spielberg's not able to recapture that that feeling of what it is to be watching a Spielberg film that reflects on the 1980s. And in order for us to have Ready Player One, it needs to have that that spill that 1980s Spielberg feel. And but of course, that's just me. My concerns could be just you know without merit. That's just how I am and how I observe things. And I could very well be wrong.